spirits with you. Today, back on the beer wall, let's change, don't it? Hey, it's all right, them bloody advent calendars, but sometimes you just want to uh, drink a beer in the normal place. And this is the normal place, the beer wall, my home of beers, as it were. So today, from these fellas, Ilkley Brewery, who have been going for 10 years, it seems. Um, it's their winter of discontent, uh, Imperial Stouts. So I won this in, in Insta on an Instagram competition and uh, very happy to, to win it. I mean, bloody hell, look at the size of the bottle, big 750 mil bottle and 11%, uh, so nice strength, you know, sort of strength that uh, ticks the odour, racky boxes, as it were. And... I'll pour it out and then I'll talk about what the backstory on here, which is actually quite an interesting backstory, to be fair. But first, without further ado, let's crack this baby open and see what it's like. So on the website, it's, it's about 15 quid down to 12.99. It doesn't, it doesn't say, good evening. It doesn't say it's about national delivery. Good evening. And uh, so, you know, it might be a thing if you was interested to look on their website or message them and say, do you actually deliver nationally? Because if you're delivering crates of beer nationally, then I can't see what difference a big bottle makes. I mean, I've had it delivered to me and I've won a competition, so I've, I would have thought that it would anyway. God, it's some weight in it. Oh, look at that. Nice dog paw. And look at that. Yes, yeah, it came today. And uh, so, obviously, a black paw. Oh, nice nose as well. I, I, you know, this year, I have never, in all the time of uh, being a, no, I'll leave that there. In all the time I've been following beers, I've never known so many Imperial Stouts come out. mouth-watering so I did the two reviews earlier and I went in laid on the settee and I was nodding off and I thought I've got to get up and do some otherwise I'm just going to fall asleep for the rest of the night so as you do put the washing on and do things like that cleaning it is and the backstory is awesome nice dark a uh, nice strong malty aroma as you would expect really Oh, definitely getting a bit of a woman raisin vibe to it. But the taste, the strength, wow. And unlike the snake venom, which it's all about being the world's strongest beer. It's not about being a beer that connoisseurs can enjoy. This, to me, even after a few sips, it's a connoisseur's beer. Oh, flipping out. That's lovely. That's a true Christmas present, that is. And then I've gone and bought another four of a you know a different brand. It's smooth, it's easy to drink. You know you're getting the ABV, but like any beer, you take your time, you enjoy it. So it says here on the back, aged in wood, it is ready to drink now. But will happily age further at home. Store in a cool dark place, bottle conditioned. Brewed and bottled by hand by, obviously these are their brewers, Charlie Dakin, Chris Watts and Adam Scroggins. Brewed in lockdown number one, bottled in lockdown number two. Hence the discontent thing really, you know. So it's, uh, and now here's the backstory and, and this, this, I like this. So, Imperial Stout, a beer to remember. It's nice having this light by the way. Um, a year to forget. As the world ground to a halt amid the... <laughs> Just had an email telling me I'm online. <laughs> Let me piss. <clears throat> Pardon my French. Amid the pub's cold time in spring 2020, our brewing team set to brewing something special for what we knew would be a hard winter ahead. So obviously, they, you know, like most people, you could see it was going to be a very, very tough year. Rich, indulgent, powerful and wonderful. The counterbalance you need in your life. The treat you deserve. Smoke on the nose. 
bitter chocolate and sweet molasses on the finish. Our way of giving you something to smile about, smile about, go well. And let's be fair, when you're drinking something that is amazing, you do smile, don't you? Well, I do. You know, I'm drinking it and, 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 I'm, and I'm got a big smile. Yeah, yeah, amazing thinking, good forward thinking, really. So, yeah. And then I've also bought them uh, from Magpie Brewery. I bought four Imperial Stouts. So it's going to be a very Merry Christmas. I just need to do the two Advent calendar reviews earlier in the day so that when I'm drinking this, I'm not already pissed, you know. Otherwise, uh, go up the ass, pissed out me head, the wife will not be happy. Oh. That is bloody lovely. It really is. So, smoke on the nose. I'm getting a hint. You definitely get the, the chocolate. Quite a strong vibe of chocolate. Molasses. I'm not overly familiar with what molasses are. I did get sort of a rum and raisin feel to it. There's, I mean, molasses is like a treacle, isn't it? I did get that at the end, in the finish. But the main thing is, like always, with any beer, does it taste good? Yes. And at the moment, it's deceptively deceptively strong it don't taste like an 11 percent at the moment although obviously i've got a bottle and a half to drink so i'll feel it at some stage i'm not sure though oh yeah yeah you get the you do get the abv you can feel it have you see this is something i, I want to do uh this year i've done it with Juice wines, where I've experimented, I'm going to do it more with proper brews, where, um, obviously, I can't afford to buy, you know, the, like the micro, little micro brewery kits for home, uh, where you do all your grain stuff, can't afford it, you know, I can't take the money out of the house budget to do that, so home brewing using plastic buckets, you know, that's about the, the limit of what I can do, but um, certainly want to experiment more with with stouts and ginger beers as well i mean i really fancy doing an imperial ginger beer i've never seen one around and uh you know i mean if i could buy a, a barrel yeah it's all about time isn't it you know if it's your job then you can donate time to it like when i'm at work I can donate plenty of time to gardening because I'm there all the time. But when you get home, there's only so many hours in the day. I mean, if you spend nearly two hours doing beer reviews, it kind of kills the night. <laughs> oh. The lovely sweetness in the back end. And, uh, yeah, lovely. Very, very enjoyable. Definitely a beer that, and like you said about the smile bit that they put on, it does make you smile because it is that type of beer. Oh yeah, God, do so. The, the reviews, to be fair, uh, at the moment I'm at a lot better position than I was earlier in the year. But the start of the year and right up till August, I was having a, shh, a terrible time. So for now to be doing. And doing reviews kept me going through. You know, sometimes, because obviously, there's a lot of stuff you can't say to your wife about shit that goes off at work. But if you're saying it to people that you don't know, and uh, and probably will never meet you, it's like getting it off your chest. And that's where mental health is a good thing, by talking to people and getting stuff off, off your chest. You know. And, uh, and especially in a year like this, where you just don't know whether you would be one of those people I mean, that's what it's like close. It's a lovely little beer. And uh, I must contact Ilkley Brewery myself because they've got a barrel aged barley wine that's 15 quid a bottle. And you know, for the special stuff, you know, when you're in cheap, I mean, let's be fair, most of us like the supermarket stuff because it's cheap, it's easy to get and readily available. But for, you, for the treats, like your birthdays, Christmas, and when you just fancy a treat, um, 
getting something out the barrel aged or even this this winter stout again you know and if they do a nationwide delivery oh i mean i've been on their site today looking at perusing all the beers as you do uh, being a nosy bleeder and they've got a good range of beers i have actually reviewed a couple of ilkley's before somewhere on the channel but uh done that many reviews i can't pick them out but you know um i might have been from marks and spencers yes yeah they do a barrel aged barley wine and uh i was open to win that and uh they had some some days where it was a barley wine in the competition some days where it was a case of mixed beers and to be fair i entered the one with the mixed beers and but i wasn't overly bothered it was the barley wine that was top of the list and and then i got notification the day after i fell asleep early probably pissed uh, fell asleep early and uh I woke up and I'd seen this and it said something about a winter of discontent. And I thought, what's that then? And I zoomed in and when it says Imperial Stout, I'm thinking, yes, get in. And, uh, but I still want to review the barley wine. So I think after Christmas, if it's still on sale, this is the problem as well. If you're like me, you, you sometimes you weigh up the money, you know, because we're not all rich. You know, a lot of us are struggling day to day. Um, and, uh, you know, if you are, you are. Yeah, I mean, I've done Head Quacker. Head Quacker, fucking hell, it sounds like a cue. From Woodford's, their barley wine, and that was immense too. And I thought to myself, I'm definitely going to get that after Christmas anyway, the barley wine. Anyway. And it's funny, the bloke who was doing the um, Ilkley Breweries Instagramming, what I did like, is the transparency he was doing videos every night about eight o'clock seven o'clock time so all the people that had entered the competition that day that somebody had written it down on pieces of paper what ball ache of a job writing down who's entered the competitions can you imagine if there was thousands fucking hell job and half but and what he's done he's picked them out of a hat and he says this is the winner and i like that transparency you know, because sometimes I've known with competitions, like with jobs, where they already know who it's going to before. I mean, like job. I mean, I went for a job at Sainsbury's, and they asked me to move to different stores uh, because the booze department, at another store, was in a very, very bad place. And I sorted out one store, made it look great, and then went down to the, that that store, and it wasn't shit state. And he says, "We've got to put it on the website, but you've already got the job." And then you think about that, you think about competition, sometimes it's already predetermined. I mean, I got I was at Nottingham City Council and uh, there was a, a team leader charge on this job. And uh, all of a sudden, this job was there. And then somebody comes up to me and says, uh, I've already got the job. I says, have you now? So what I did, just to stir the shit, I went up to the manager and says, uh, uh, can you put me, I want to apply for the job. And you should have seen their faces. I got them totally got them the faces dropped when i says because i was miles better than the person that they wanted to shoehorn in and uh, in the end i turned it down and i didn't want to i didn't want to be a manager but it's amazing you know how, how, how they are at times oh It did. I seen the faces, seen them squirm, and you know there was a little satisfaction there, thinking, "Yeah, yeah, you're you're going to be thinking uh, if he puts any grievances in, we're up the shit." Because you shouldn't be saying before the job's officially ended that somebody's already got the job. Very, very naughty, very. But it happens. It's like a lot of jobs you see on the internet. These jobs are already gone. It's the fact that they have to advertise them. I mean, not all companies. <laughs> so I've got to say it's as smooth as you can get um, really very easy drinking to say it's 11% it's taste I mean I can feel it I'm getting the feel of it but uh, it's a bit like a, a McEwen's champion in the way it is where it's about the alcohol but it's nice subtle and uh, it's not trying to 
it's not like a craft beer that's trying to say, yeah, look at this. You know, it's just slowly dragging you in. And whoa, I'm starting to feel it. I mean, for me, that's a Christmas treat. And the further you get into it, like all beers, the further you get in, the more pronounced the flavours get. And as I'm getting down the glass and my palate's getting used to it, it's becoming even more tasty. Oh, I mean, I couldn't pick out all the flavours, but I'm not a God's gift. I mean, you know, some people are amazing. They can pick out all the flavours. It is. It's all about, you get any beer, and you do it yourself on that when you're at home on your own. You drink a beer, you start off, and you, you get so many flavours. And th to me, this is another beer that needs to be drank at room temperature rather than chilled. It's not so cold in there tonight. There's, I've got no gas fire on. It's, it's not even that cold to have a gas fire on. And yet, you know, the flavour that's coming through. So even at a cooler temperature, it's lovely. At a room temperature, this would be absolutely immense. I mean, let's be fair, pretty damn decent as it is. Temperature does. Every beer's got its sweet spot. And you know, for me, um, breweries really ought to have a thing on 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 any beer any can the sweet temperature that you're supposed to be drinking at to get the optimum flavor for that particular beer um i mean it's not easy to always do because you know every, it's not easy to control temperature but if it's going to be chilled i mean like most paint most pale ales golden ales deserve to be lower oh lefe which Lefe, the Brune, the Brown, there's so many, isn't there? I mean, I had the Winter Lefe from Beers of Europe. That was a stunner, that was. I mean, I'd love to go to Belgium one day. And it's funny with Lefe. Oh, lovely. It's funny with Lefe because I think it was the, the Brune. And I had it uh, the first time I tried it. And this is uh, like eight years ago. Yes, this is about eight years ago and I tried it and it tasted of tobacco ash and I thought this is nasty, never going to try that again. And as, as over the years, as you try beers that over the years have got better, good evening. Yes, I've had the ruby as well. So here's the beer, it is an absolutely cr a cracker of a beer and uh I'll pour some out for you to see. I can't pour some out for you, obviously, in reality, but it's uh, wow, absolutely lovely. The the strength starts off at the at the start. It's quite you don't notice the strength, and as you go down, it gets more interesting throughout. Um, I got a hint of rum and raisin on the taste. Yeah, it's the thing at the moment, isn't it? We're all doing virtual. Hey, I am with the missus. No, I'm not going down that road. <clears throat> Looking down, making myself choke. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, there's, there's a subtle smokiness on the nose. There's definitely malt on the nose. Um, it's a smooth drink all the way through. I got rum and raisin at one stage. There's definitely dark chocolate. It says there's molasses. And, you know, the backstory to this is amazing. Um, for those who've just joined, um, it was brewed in the first lockdown, bottled in the second lockdown. And they already knew it was going to be a really crappy year. And uh, it's, a, it's a beer to put a smile on your face. And I've got to be honest. When it tastes this nice, it does put a smile on your face. I do like, you know, the good beers. Ah, yes. And it's, oh. and as, as I've gone down, you know, obviously it's a big bottle. So as I've gone down the bottle, 
you know, obviously the palate has been more washed with the flavour and the taste, and it really accentuates the taste and the flavour. Oh, lovely. I can't wait to taste some of these beers, the new, the other Imperial Stouts I've brought, just to get, you know, uh, I've never been one for buying uh, dear, you know, expensive beers, simply because I haven't been able to afford it. And this year, I've been a bit more lucky on the internet with my uh, earnings and doing gardens as well. So a little bit more money in the pot. So I've been, like, like when I bought Brewmeister, uh, Snake Venom, I've been going to, just trying a few more more expensive beers and uh, you know the quality of the beer I mean I still prefer supermarket beers overall because obviously you know on a low income you do you know you you only you only buy what you really can afford but um retreats like this oh I've definitely got to try their barrel aged barley wine and I'll have to email them and say to them look do you deliver nationally because on the site it says about they don't so Hopefully they do. I mean, after Christmas, a New Year's barley wine, New Year's Eve barley wine, now that'd be something. Because I'm not fussed about um, drinking sparkly wines. Being promoted soft drinks. I'd want to stay as the craft beer buyer. Stuff doing soft drinks. Who'd want, to buy, who'd want to be the buyer of soft drinks? I'd want to be the wine buyer or the, you know, the spirit buyer. And it's funny, you know, um, Tesco's didn't sell the King's Ginger Liqueur. And I love that. One of my go-to uh, liqueurs. I bought it this Christmas, funnily enough. Um, I've spent so much money on other stuff. and uh, But I actually s emailed them and says, can you stock the King's Ginger Liqueur? And bogger me, a few months later, they were stocking it. So it's amazing. You know, sometimes the public, i.e. us, can force, can, you know, guide the supermarkets into get stocking stuff, you know. So it's, it's always worth a try, especially if it's a, a spirit that you want to get, but it's always art, art. You know, you don't want to pay posters and packaging on top of everything else. I mean, now they've unlisted it, so that's Bob that one, but otherwise I'd, I'd have bought it this Christmas, so, you know, if it hadn't been unlisted. I've noticed that, um, flipping heck. Oh, shit. The brand name's gone from me. The right one, Bianca. Oh God, it's gone. No. Oh, that's annoying. No, it'll come back to me in a minute. Oh, you know when you, you know when you've you know the name Bacardi. <laughs> yes, Bacardi. Now. It used to be just standard Bacardi, obviously the clear Bacardi, what you call the white Bacardi. Then it went to Bacardi Blanca, Bacardi Negro, i.e. the black, and then the spice Bacardi. Now they've got coconut Bacardi. And as a fan of Malibu, I love Malibu, 21%. Malibu Black at 35% was much better. The Caribbean Spiced Rum and Malibu. Oh, awesome. But you can only buy it at airports. Now they bought out a Bacardi coconut, and I reckon my wife's got me it for Christmas, because uh, I've been on I've been on a ban. I'm not allowed to buy any flipping beer. I mean, I managed to buy them last night only because uh, the the Magpie ones only because there was um, some leggings on sale, and I brought her the leggings, and then she says, uh, and I mentioned about these. She says, well, I bought it from there. You can buy yeah, you can buy there if you want. So I did. All about appeasing the wives, isn't it? There's a game to be played, you know, with all of us. There's, you know, with your partners. There's always a game. Oh yeah, you've got to be, you know. 
And it's all also about not looking drunk when, you, when you've had a few uh, on the cheeky ones on the side, you know. Can't be too honest. I mean, it's deadly now, because now, not only have I got all my beers in here, but I've got a lot of wines, and I've got a lot of spirits in the shed as well, so, Jesus Christ. It's a dodgy place. But my mental health is a hell of a lot better than it was earlier in the year, so I won't be splurging on, like, you know, on vodkas and stuff, so. Unless I fancy, you know, just having a, having a right good and, and fuck it, I'll just neck it. But this, wow. I'm feeling it now that the the strength is starting to get to me and uh, oh you know back in June July if you'd have said to me that the year was going to turn out like it did at one stage I was looking at a tunnel with no lights nothing total darkness ahead and to be now and you know to be so different from six months ago, to be in a job which is a which is which is absolutely amazing, and I still have to get it around in my own head that I am in a fantastic job with a fantastic boss, great workmates, and then also in life, you know, in my personal life. Uh, obviously, I've got a great wife and I've got great kids. I've got a grand uh, son on the way, and uh, sometimes. You know, it's nice to take, do a stock take of what you've got and realise that you're in a good place. COVID, albeit has been devastating for lots of businesses, lots of people. You know, you really feel sorry for each and every person that's lost things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, take a piss up against the tree when you think no one's around. <laughs> and yet COVID, I've come out of COVID better in all ways both financially uh job personal and mental health as well so for me this has been a very good year you know very big downhill in the middle of the year but coming away from that it's been amazing and i got out of a job that was a shit job flipping heck i mean i was doing gardening but it was so mundane and boring and, uh, you know, we all want to earn money in jobs, but we want to, I mean, me personally, I need to be creative. I need to be, you know, getting something out of the job. It's not just for the money because you can earn money doing anything. I mean, you can go down some woods and earn money getting a fucking wank off some old bloke if you really wanted to. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't advise doing that. Seen too much of that on the Arboretum when I was at work, you know. Blokes meeting blokes, bloke you know, in the bushes. Funny, funny job. Yeah, and I'm one of these that have to. You know, in the space of a day at work, I'll get up. And even though I'm in a good job, I'll get up and I feel a bit pissed off, a bit depressed. And I'm working. And when I'm working, I feel more more vibes more positive every time i do something that's a good win i get that that positive flows through me it's strange isn't it you know back in my when i was a 20 year old i didn't give it absolute monkeys and that's why the student population are today they don't give a shit they think fuck it covid's not getting us fuck you older bastards and you can understand where they're coming from in some ways but then they're taking it home to their mums and dads and their grands and granddads you know and uh, so it spirals down the line. But with any luck, I still think we're going into a lockdown come January. Uh, but that will be the final lockdown. And then we can move on. And uh, and then Britain won't be a part of Europe. Yay! I mean, we've got enough decent beer here. We don't need Europe for beer. When you see the Welsh doing it, Northern Ireland doing it, you know we're next. Boris doesn't want to admit it. But let's be fair, we've already lost billions this year. It's like the Third World War. And uh, we're all going to be paying it back. 
Three hundred pounds in the shed, Jobs are good and are they? I mean, I, we, I was um, cutting the hedge back in late August and I didn't even know what these things were. I was, I was chopping back and it was bloody hops. Yeah. But I also think we, we also need to start um, taxing social media because the likes of Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, Amazon and, and people like that are making billions Oh, bless him. Grant Cooper. Get well soon, mate. And I miss the... Uh, I miss the... There we go. Oh, bloody hell. Jesus, I didn't know that about hops. But then again, if you think about hops as well... I mean, let's hope Grant gets well soon. Good lad. You know, no one wants to be struck down with this. None of us, none of us want it. You know, it's a disease. It's a illness that none of us really want. Um, as for hops, you know, we as a country, in especially in the in in the south, need to be more clever. We need to create more. We don't want to be buying it from abroad. Make it yourself. You know, in this country especially in the south, like Cornwall, Devon, them sort of areas, it's warmer down there. There's got to be land that can be utilised. We've grown, not uh, Britain has grown far too dependent on getting it from abroad. Grow it here, grow it cheap, supply our own breweries. You know, it's the way forward. If you're looking, I was a gardener. You buy plants, you're paying flipping out. I'll give you an example. Uh, the boss at work, he was buying these lavenders. 15 quid a plant. He bought 10 plants, 150 quid. Mm, that's a shame, isn't it? But then again, you know, soil can be changed to match. So they can artific artificially, you know, change soil if need be. They should be able to anyway. Um, obviously not to the same types as what's abroad, but but with with growing stuff, I can grow seeds and I can save thousands of pounds by growing our own, and I am doing. And uh, me already for next year, I have got thousands of seeds growing already, already at this height, and uh, I'm the time the spring comes, I will have multiples of thousands of seedlings and plants all ready to go in the two locations. You imagine that with hops. You know, it, it can be done. It, you know, there's never a way where we can't do a certain thing. Adapting and changing things to work in our environment, we can do it, you know, as gardeners, as growers, you know. There's always a way, personally. But anyway, back to the beer. This has been a, it's been a nice beer. I'm actually started sober. Now I've had, I've had it for a few minutes, I've sobered down a bit. Probably a good thing, because the wife will look at me and think, you're pissed up, aren't you? And this is the issue, I suppose, with settled costs. You know, there are a lot of clever businessmen out there who can do things at a price and get things done. Probably not through the books, but get it done in a way where they're not paying so much out. A bit of backhanders. There's always a, there's always a way round. I feel anyway. And, uh, you know, start off small, maybe. But, you know, there's always a way round to beat anything, really. Oh, I missed all that. Bloody YouTube. Oh. Yeah, I suppose that's a problem, isn't it? 
Wow, you know a lot about hops. It's good to have people with so much knowledge as well, because obviously I only know so much. So it's nice to hear it from other people who know more, a lot more than me. And uh, But deals are there to be made, aren't they? You know, from the trop tropical brewers and that, this stuff in this country that they want. Wow. So what's your favourite beer then? What's your favourite style of beer being a professional brewer? Because it's interesting, you know, for people, people, I mean, I might review beers, but I'm a beer fan. Yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Saison, ah. See, I, I reviewed some from Partizan Brewing. That was a Saison that was like a, a sour Saison and it was a bit weird. And uh, yeah, not my cup of tea, to be fair. Oh, what was the beer? And did I give it a good review? And was I okay? Because obviously, I'm not an expert. No way near an expert. Just a fan. And uh, it's nice to... some, Especially blind reviews, where I don't know nothing about the beer. And just to see if you've got it right. Sometimes you might not get it right and talking out your arse. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I've had too much drink to panic but it's, it is interesting and it's nice to hear from people who are professionals you know it's a tra I mean I'd love to be in the trade ah ah draft beer that was lovely <laughs> yeah oh the bloody cherry beer that blew up on me oh god so I'm sitting here doing the review and the cherry beer lid blew off just behind me on this shelf and it fucking hell I'm like Jesus Christ and you know I wasn't in the best of places um that was from low cost beer so yeah I remember the beer it's, it's amazing how the wife will tell me something and 10 minutes later I forgot you know whether it's just me saying oh fuck it I'm not interested and and then I'll review a beer, and I can remember a beer that I reviewed a year ago. And, oh, yeah, I remember that beer. And it's, it's amazing how your brain can remember some stuff and not other stuff. Yeah, and that was a crack of a beer, Norman's in Hanoi. Yes, Hanoi, if that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. And, you know, love brew uh, sorry, low-cost brewing. Yeah, it was hilarious. <clears throat> Freaked me to death, you know. I had rats in the house. They got underneath that. We had a break with it next to our one of our air bricks. We had a um, it disintegrated. Little bastards got in. Uh, Part of my French, and uh, we had this scratching underneath the house. And at one o'clock in the morning, the wife says to me, "I'm not going. I'm not. No, she was on. The, she was doing her cakes, and she says, I'm not going deaf, am I? What's this? And I'm there on the stairs. I'm looking at her scratching. And I'm like, oh shit, mice or rats? What you know?" We thought it was a mouse. And, uh, you know, and then we had rats. And there was one in the house, little bastards. Ah. I'm sure my wife does to me, you know, as well. Yeah. I'll talk to her about something and she'll just totally ignore me. And I'm like, did you hear what I've just said? And uh, we can all do it, I suppose, can't we? But, yeah. Yeah, probably was. And, uh, yeah, so I was still freaked out. And then when that blew on me, it was like, whoa. I mean, it still freaks me out when I hear squirrels running across the roof of the beer room. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what's that? And, uh, yeah, it probably gets me. Good evening. You're a bit late, but it's, it's not a bad review, actually. And it's a gorgeous beer, an imperial stout and, uh, oh. So, going on about Norman in, in Hanoi, and Hanoi, if that's how you pronounce it, and low-cost beer. Low-cost beer, I mean, I don't know what they pay for, for what the product, but what they're doing with their draft beer, squirting a bit of CO in, and you know, it's bringing beers that we wouldn't normally see, like by the River Brew Company's beers, to the massive population. 
and uh, I discovered them back in oh, lockdown, March. And uh, since then, the draft beers have been amazing. If you look on their site now, they've got some quality beer. I mean, 18 quid for a litre from Tiny Rebel. Whew, that's a bit of a cost. But it's, it's basically £9 for a 500ml bottle of Imperial Stout, which is not bad priced. When you think, you know, this sort of stuff's about 12 to 15 quid normally. So you can understand why they're charging what they charge. But the, the business model, from a business perspective, it's an amazing business model that they've done. You know, total admiration. And obviously, as beer fans, which we all are, no one wants to see beer poured down a drain. If it's drinkable, then bloody sell it. So this is 11%. I can just about read it there. Yeah, there's none left. And it's an absolute cracker of a beer. I won it in a competition on Instagram. And, uh, you know, social media. I mean, I have so much respect for any company in a year like this year, which is a year like no other, that companies, breweries, are doing beer competitions because... You know, they've all had a tough year. All of them had. Hospitality has had a really tough year. Retail has had a, especially supermarkets, have had a fantastic year because everybody has been forced to go to them for not only food, clothes, ex petrol, etc. But these fellas, you know, they've had a tough year. And uh, to do competitions, you know, your heart goes out to them, doesn't it? You know, I mean, like my boss at work, They've not been open since March. They're living off uh, furlough. They're living off uh, whatever government subsidies and that. Yeah. And this is where businessmen, I mean, the bloke I, I work for is very astute. You know, he, he said to me at the very start of it, he says, I can't afford to pay you more. Oh, shit. I missed the rest of your comment. That was a good comment, by the way. Oh, it was amazing. And it is great. Oh, balls, move that. Yeah, it is great. You know, a lot of companies now... Yes. And this is where, as clever businessmen, we utilise, we see what other people do and we follow what they're doing. If you think about online shops, Amazon are probably the best example of what works well, but they aren't the cheapest. You know, no, by far the cheapest. They're not, no way near. They're just convenient. And now a lot of companies, a lot of beer companies across the UK are doing local deliveries, online deliveries, national deliveries. And um, we're, we're adapting. And in some ways, COVID has forced the older style businesses to modernise. And in some ways, those who modernise well have done well out of this. But by utilising people like low cost who have already got that business model in place by bringing, sending beer to them for them to sell and you're, get, you're still getting money off it, you know. And I understand the VAT side of things um, because it's shit, isn't it, what the government charge? Exactly. I mean, I, you know, I've been spending basically more than 30 quid a week on beers throughout the lockdown you know and i've been going to different breweries not just supermarkets because then bleeders get enough money but um you know trying different breweries and uh using this youtube channel to do the same you know to to bring it out because we're in a situation now where 
in 2020, the internet's so massive now. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're in a situation now where people are buying more online than ever. And uh, if you trigger the free delivery, which is always worth doing anyway, you know, it's always worth bringing. And uh, people want to, and, you know, this year, like no other, people want to support the breweries that make the beers that you can't get in normal pubs. It's going to be an interesting year ahead. I think come April, we'll be over it. But obviously, it's all the money you've lost before April. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I am now in hospitality. I'm working for two hotels that are shut. They're not open. He's not earning any money whatsoever. So I understand more than ever that, you know, the background where, you know, obviously they, they've still got to pay your electricity bills, your gas, your, you know, your water, your rent, your mortgages and all whatever, you know, and, uh, Furlough only goes so far. Um, I mean, my boss, what they're doing, they've got, they've, they've, he's turned the hotels, which were doing bed and breakfast and events into purely a wedding event and a weddings and events venues. And uh, so they're taking deposits and that is helping to obviously keep me in a job, but, but keep things going until COVID ends, which it will, you know, it's not going to, we've already got the vaccines. It won't be long before the Ox, Oxford vaccines done the dust, you know, that's going through. And the Oxford vaccine is the one that's the best for Britain because it, it goes from like 70 to 90%. I can't, you know, in Nottingham, can't speak for the rest of the country, but in Nottingham, we were very, very low for transmission. The students came back. Students are young, not the cleverest, although they've got A-levels, but let's not go down that road. But they all congregate, they all mix together. The virus, woof, Nottingham's the highest in the UK. But the pubs, they were so COVID secure. They were better than the supermarkets. Supermarkets are worse because every time somebody with COVID touches, you know, goes like that, touches a tin, you go to the tin, all of a sudden, you know, get in your face, you fucking got it. So in that way, pubs were actually safer. <clears throat> and in some ways, cruel as it would be, ban the under 25s. <clears throat> I mean, Nottinghamshire now is, is quite low. But we are still in tier three. And I do feel sorry for all the pubs near us. You know, uh, I've got admiration for the local breweries. Obviously, you only know the breweries that are in your area. So you can only really say what you know from the breweries that you know. And a lot of the breweries in my area, although the pubs are shut, they're doing their best to sell. And at least the good thing is, a lot of people are, you know, buying from the breweries. The sad part is, is the people that are running the pubs. Because obviously, they rent off the breweries. So, you know, it, if you can get the support and keep going, you know, however you can, then it's brilliant. If you're not getting any, any support whatsoever, it must be terrible. It really must. It's tough. And, uh, you know, we all, you know. The problem is, it's happened on the worst bloody year. Going into Brexit, I mean, fucking hell. Of all the shit years for it to happen. Bre the Brexit year, I mean, wow. What a massive blow to all of us. You know, it's going to be interesting. But, you know, I think Britain can do what Europe can do. We don't need Europe for everything. And it's certainly, you know, around the world. And there's a lot of beer lovers in this country. You know, 
uh, I've as as a fan of beers, I've gone from just totally supermarket stuff to you know uh, spending the money and doing you know um, buying straight from breweries instead of supermarkets. But supermarkets, let's be fair. They force the brewery prices down. Yes, they buy a hell of a lot more from breweries. We're all aware of how much they buy from breweries. And uh, But obviously, when you buy from the breweries, you're buying a, a price which obviously they're making their bit on. And, uh, and then you're also getting, obviously, the there's a lot of stuff that you don't see in supermarkets that is brewed. Like this fella. There's a lot of stuff that you just don't see. Yes, Morrison's and Tesco's, more than anybody. Sainsbury's, yeah. Asda, fucking hell, they're useless at the moment. Marks and Spencer's, yeah, a little bit. But yeah, Tesco's, their range of craft beers is certainly evolving at a fast pace. It seems to be every three months. It's a total overhaul, which is a good thing. You know, you've got the traditional stuff for the people that want the traditional stuff. But for the craft beer enthusiasts, it's rotating on quite a, you know, quite the cycle. And, the, and for me, you know, it's that circle of life, isn't it? Because without being a fucking bullshitter, <clears throat> you need supermarkets to get that to get the word out to the general population, the population that don't look on websites like we all do. And uh, all of a sudden they'll pick out, say a Northern Monk bear, never heard of them. If, who are these people? Nothing. Oh, a 9% Imperial. And they think, oh God, that sounds, I'll drink that. Think, oh, bloody hell. Let me click on their website. And uh, I mean, it used to be all about Brewdog. Back in 2010, 11, it was all about Brewdog. And since then, it's obviously, I mean, nowadays, wow, there's so many breweries. And even on my doorstep, there's a brewery, less than, well, you know, a little, a little brewery, 100 yards away from me. And these people make cider, Blue Barrel Cider, uh, based in Sherwood in Nottingham. And uh, what they do, and it's very interesting what they do, they scrump off apple trees that... Um, you know, where the apples will just fall to the ground and be wasted. They go to them trees, take the apples off and use them. And with permission, obviously. But, um, you know, that to me is amazing. Stuff that's not getting wasted, reused, you know, that recycling. Wow. Anyway, this has turned out to be a long review. Oof. Rattling again as usual, but what an amazing beer. Oh. So if you've watched the review, they are lovely. And also, make sure you try the Northern Star. Weaker, but still has the quality of taste. This has been an immense um, beer. And uh, to say that the fact that I actually won it rather than paid for it, you know, in a year where breweries are suffering, really suffering, and, you, you know, you do understand people, businesses, you know, uh, I totally understand where businesses are and it is heartbreaking. I see businesses around Nottingham, they're doing all they can to survive. Obviously, it's not just about selling beer, it's about paying the council tax, the rates, all that. There's a lot more behind it than what a lot of people realise. Uh, same for restaurants, hospitality in Britain. Has took an absolute battering this year, but anyway, this is an absolute cracker of a beer, truly awesome beer. That the flavour, the taste, and uh, you know, drink at room temperature, totally immense. It's on Ilkley Brewery's website. It's normally fifteen. I think it's down to twelve ninety nine, if memory serves me correctly. But they've also got a barrel aged barley wine which i really want to try 
but it says it's not deliverable nationally. So I need to contact them and say to them, do you do it national? And if they do, I want a bottle. Um, <clears throat> out of five. Now, this is the interesting part. This was immense throughout. The taste was there. Not quite the complexities of some beers I've had, but it was a complex little beastie. And it was a very interesting beer. Not just about the ABV. And that's where beers should be. Never just about the strength. If you're drinking stuff just because it's strong, no, that's not the way to be. You drink stuff for the flavour, for the aroma, for the experience. And uh, if you can't pick out all the taste, that's not really the Roy. You know, did you enjoy it? And for me, totally enjoyed it all the way through. I feel absolutely battered. And I've got to go up the arse and probably get a red card off the wife. And uh, she'll say, why the hell was you down the shed an hour? And uh, luckily, I can blame the internet for keeping me talking. Cheers, lads and ladies. <laughs> Out of five. Well, uh, for me, this was an absolute stormer. Um, for me, a 4.62 out of five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She don't know you, so I can blame you that all you like. <laughs> I'm not daft. <coughs> yeah, I really liked it. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Ilkley Brewery, for, you know, picking me out of your hat. It gave me the chance to try a beer. Obviously, as beer fans, it is a lovely beer. Um, as fans of beer, you, you know, the beers you really love are the beers that make you smile that you enjoy, that you take a long time to drink. It's not about two minute reviews where, yeah, 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 gone. Oh yeah, that was nice. Yeah. It's about, you know, experience. It's an experience for me. The best beers of it are an experience. And, uh, and these people, the backstory to this beer, if you watch it from the beginning where I read about the backstory, they foreseen what was happening, uh, you know, much to the, um, you know, to the detriment of the hospitality sector, sector rather, fucking hell, pissed up. <clears throat> but yeah, a really nice beer. And as always, thank you massively for the comments. Um, it's really great to hear from people that are not only reviewers who know more than me, but also people who actually brew the stuff that know more than me. And, uh, yeah, probably everyone knows more than me, but, uh, you know, um, I'm always, you know, I might put down that I review beers, but I'm absolutely a fan more than anything else. Reviewing, it's just a, it's just a way to get out of the house and uh, drink beer and not get a bollocking for it. I'm not daft. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the... Uh, Time of your life spent. Yeah, another hour wasted listening to some bloke with bold hair and grey hair. Yes, my hair needs cutting. <clears throat> I do apologise. And uh, fucking hell, I can hardly see that. I can hardly see the mobile phone. Wow. This is a quality, you know. And I do wonder, you know, if you're, if you're a brewer of a beer, we are all fans of each other's work. I am a fan of other people's gardening skills, of other people's Christmas lights. So if you're a beer brewer, you're a fan, or a reviewer even, you're a fan of other people's, because that's what you do, you're a fan of what they create. And you know, it's always interesting to hear from the people that actually do it on the ground. Thanks for watching. See you soon. But you won't see this till tomorrow because I've broke the 20 minute um, limit by some distance. Cheers. And cheers, little Ilkley Brewery. Oh.